Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Drew Haddad, Andrew George Haddad. We got to get into that. I have a similar type of full name. And uh, he is a seventh round pick of the 2000 draft for the Bills, also played with the Colts and the Chargers. Um, a favorite around the building at the time you were there, Josh, uh, in yep. special teams in uh, 2000. And uh, Drew, thanks for joining us. Where are you calling from? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. I'm calling from uh, my hometown, Cleveland, Ohio, in my car. Awesome. Great, great. So we yep. decided to do a kind of a UB to Buffalo uh, episode. I know a lot of people around here are always curious about, you know, the relationship between, you know, the University of Buffalo and, uh, you know, the Bills. Neiman Roosevelt's going to join us in about 15 minutes as well. We could have both of you on at the same time to talk about both your journeys to the NFL from UB. Neiman grew up here, famously went to the same high school, St. Joe's, that I did. But, Drew, we, we kind of wanted to, to talk to you first and, and kind of get into your journey. So, I guess, growing up in Cleveland, was football always the goal? Was the NFL, like, realistic, you know, when you were in high school? Kind of how did uh, yeah. how, the whole journey start? No, I appreciate it. So, yeah, I grew up here uh, in Cleveland, and I went to Cleveland St. Ignatius High School. Um, and you know what? I mean, I always thought in my mind that I, I, I wanted to be a part of sports. I didn't know at what level. Um, I was a little undersized. Um, but I knew that, you know, in my heart that I was, I was competitive enough and I had enough fire that I could probably do something. Um, and I actually like basketball a little bit more than I liked football to start with, but, um, I was height challenged. So I only got up to about five, <laughs> ten and a half or so. So I figured that'd be a little bit more challenging, but, um, no, it's a football town. I mean, Northeastern Ohio high school football. Once I saw St. Ignatius winning some state championships, I had an older brother that was there who went on to play at Purdue. Um, I, I just became really enamored with the program, the tradition, the history, and I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, so when I got to Ignatius, I played, I played football in the fall, I played hoops in, in, in the winter, and I ran track in the spring, and um, it kept me busy. And, uh, you know, luckily enough for me, I was given the opportunity to play at the next level at University of Buffalo. So, so when, um, when you were in high school, uh, we always like to ask a bunch of the guys, kind of when did you think that you were going to be able to go – you know, to college, maybe get a free ride to college. Obviously, that's the goal. I've yeah. got two 10-year-old boys right now playing flag, and and the one yeah. is, is good. And, you you know, you let your mind wander, and you're like, oh, boy, you know, could oh, yeah, this lead absolutely. to it? And not to the NFL, but to a college, you know, a college education. So so what was the recruiting yep. process? Like, how, why'd you pick Buffalo? Uh, I mean, obviously, you ended up getting picked by Buffalo in the NFL, but you have – you're yeah. unique that you picked Buffalo – you know, for college, you're the first player we've had on that that yeah. picked coming here yourself. Everybody else kind of was was chosen to come here. I got you. Yeah, no, no, not a problem. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was think during during my high school years, I was like I said, blessed to play with a lot of guys that were getting Division One opportunities. Um, my senior class at Ignatius, we had eleven guys to go D one and play football. Wow. Um, we had Chris Hoban who played, you know, with the Vikings. Dan O'Leary was what he was drafted by the Bills. My best friend, I was best man in his wedding. We were on the same high school team. Johnny Favre went to uh, Wisconsin and started for four years. James Bennett went to Colorado State and started for four years. So we had coaches coming through our building a lot. And a lot of the success that we had at Ignatius was because, and it was built on the players and the relationships. And and Craig Service, when he was at UB, um, I think really was recruiting similar type people um, to go to school there and to play. Um, and Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio, um, UConn, a couple of the other schools that were interested in me um, started falling off towards the end, um, to be completely honest. And it ended up being that Buffalo was my only scholarship opportunity for a full ride. Mm -hmm. And um, my father kind of looked at me like, hey, you guys as fathers, you understand this. He's like, well, you're going there. You know, it's free. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? One of those types yeah. of talks. So, um, but no, I, I, I appreciated the opportunity. I appreciated, you know, a guy named Booker Brooks who coached at Penn State for a long time. Um, came over, was coaching receivers, and actually he's the guy that recruited me and offered me my scholarship. Um, I owe him a lot. You know, I mean, there's a couple of people along along my path that I, I truly owe, you know, uh, a, a, a debt of gratitude towards because of their belief in me and seeing something. And Booker Brooks at Buffalo was definitely one of those guys. You know, I, I'm, I'm struck going back to you saying that you played basketball. Um, mm -hmm. and every time I've seen an NFL athlete – um, you know, someone like you, we, <laughs> I remember there was a time where we started playing every Tuesday night when I was on the staff at ECC across the street. I, I don't really know if you were there, but a bunch of players came. It yep. was in the springtime yep. and it just blew me away. Just wh what amazing athletes you guys are. And then one of the players, I think it was Clarence Coleman, sprained his ankle pretty badly 
And Bud was like, that's it. I don't want to hear another word about playing basketball. <laughs> yep. I just yep. couldn't believe how good you were. I remember that, actually. I remember you? that, actually. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. What I remember is I was – I don't forget what year it was, but I was guarding someone, trying to guard someone, and, and – uh, Boy, Travis Henry set a pick. <laughs> I ran into him. I couldn't breathe for like five minutes because he didn't move. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you guys are yeah. amazing athletes. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. I think the transition for that too, I mean, multi-sport athletes, I mean, we don't need to get into that. But I see as, you know, in high school sports, and I have – so I have four children. I have an 18-year-old son who's playing football at Ignatius. Nice. He's going to John Carroll ne next year to play football. And then I have a 16-year-old son that plays at Ignatius. I have a 14-year-old son who's playing football and basketball. Wow. So, I mean, I, these kids are – they're busy and it's changed a lot. Uh, my daughter's my youngest, and she's into dance, which is great. That's even – that's a whole nother story. Um, but it's like – to see these multi-sport athletes and I encourage my sons and the kids that I coach and stuff to, to do as much as they can, because um, I think from the standpoint of you just see these kids kind of get worn down and, and beat up a little bit physically. And they, they, they kind of get tired of playing the same sport. Uh, football is one of those things where you can kind of out athlete people. Um, so hmm. it's, it's not a skill specific sport uh, like, like a lacrosse or, I mean, but in basketball too, I mean, you see guys that are athletes out there, they might not score 20 points a game, um, but they go out there and compete. And I think that's the bucket that I kind of fell into. And a lot of my, my teammates in the pros fell into, we'd always talk about hooping, you know, even when I was either, whether it was ECC or whether it was going to the triple gym at UB, um, you'd always sneak out to go play basketball and prove that, hmm. you know, you're, you're a hooper. And, uh, I always thought that that was funny because guys would get super, super competitive. And even they even had a basketball hoop in, um, you know, in the field house, which was which was actually kind of funny because after we'd lift, everyone would go out there and either play one on one or do something until, you know, like you yeah. said, some guys start getting hurt and getting a little too competitive. That's funny. It's kind of like how the seven footers always want to shoot threes and all the you know, yeah. smaller guys want to post up. It's kind of the same thing yeah. as a football guy wanting to be a, be a hooper. So Drew, you know, looking yeah. through your bio and, and doing a little bit of research today, you had a, a great career at UB. I mean, obviously yeah. to be drafted in the NFL, but I guess, I guess I didn't really realize, uh, you know, just you ended up as the, uh, as the, as you, as a freshman you played every game as a sophomore, you set a school record with 67 catches you know, as a senior, you set a record for receptions in a single season, and you ended you know your time here as the all-time school leader in total receptions, total receiving yards, total all-purpose yards, total punt return yards, and single season receiving yards. So maybe yeah. talk to me about playing at UB. Um, you know, I, I, I guess maybe a lot of people don't remember. Was UB good back then? Did you feel like you guys were competitive in most of the games that, you know, you stepped on the field for? Uh, and yeah. then you as obviously a team leader and, and you know, maybe one of the best players on the team, how uh, how did that impact, you know, your four years there? Let me quickly inject, too, that all those records mm -hmm. put him in the uh, UB's Athletic Hall of Fame. Yep. yep, that was a while back. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy thinking back to that. I mean, um, you know, you ask me about the competitiveness, uh, and I'll, I'll reiterate what I said before. I think service and some, and you know, Ed O'Neill, you know, who, who actually, ironically, is my father-in-law. He recruited um, a bunch of good guys. Booker Brooks recruited a lot of good guys. Like there was a lot. We had a good crew, and we were playing one double A football at the time, so we were making the transition um, on Mission One A is basically what they called it. Um, you know, so I'd go on Empire Sports and try and market our program as best I could. Um, but we were competitive early. Um, we struggled initially, I think, when we made that transition. Uh, I think, you know, kind of not saying out kicking our coverage for a football reference, but, you know, we were still transitioning a lot of some, you know, some of the guys that were there previously to the D1 guys that were being recruited. Um, so there were some growing pains. And, and again, you bring up Naaman Roosevelt, and, and I, I use that as a perfect example of, you know, in eight years' time, you know, going from, you know, the bottom of the MAC when we made the transition to winning the MAC championship in Detroit, mm -hmm. I was there that day. I loved it. I mean, I, it, it was, it was a feeling of like, it, you know, what we did and what my teammates and our alumni did um, to kind of be a part of that movement um, was extremely humbling, but it was gratifying at the same time. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you obviously weren't able to get to, you know, bowl games, et cetera, but you guys built the program, right? Like you always hear about the guys who come into a program that's down or, you know, transitioning yep. from one double A to one A. So do you, did you really feel ownership of the, the later teams that did have the success? I mean, you, you were clearly one Absolutely. of the building blocks. Do you, and do you feel like the success that you guys had was able to help draw in better, you know, better athletes as the years went by? Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, I look back and, and, um, you know, I'm reminded by some some Buffalo people, you know, from time to time, you know, Willie Evans, 
um, was drafted to the Buffalo Bills and Ed Ellis by when I graduated. So only two guys in the history of our program had been drafted. Um, one was, you know, Willie was drafted to the Bills and Ed Ellis, I believe, was drafted to the Patriots. And, and then I was the third to ever be drafted in the NFL. And it's like you look and you fast forward 23 years. And again, I don't have those stats. I don't have those numbers to see how many guys have been drafted, how many guys have been on rosters. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's humbling because you, you kind of sit there and go, yeah, I feel like a lot of the guys even before me, you know, paved the way. And then I, I did my part as best I could to kind of carry the torch um, at the University of Buffalo, um, you know, it, to the best of my ability. No, nah, that was great. And then, so, so take us to uh, draft day. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what are your memories? Uh, very special day, obviously. Yeah, my memories were um, going to church in the morning with my parents and my girlfriend, who's now my wife, uh, my brother, and uh, going over to St. Joe's on Main Street in Buffalo, and then went yeah. back to my uh, went back to my apartment and had all my teammates and my family and friends there. Kind of knew that on day two that I was, you know, somewhere maybe in the fifth to seventh round. And I knew the Bills and the Colts um, were kind of jockeying. Um, and there was kind of a sandwich pick in the seventh round. So when I didn't go in the fifth and sixth round, there was a sandwich pick. My agent kept calling me, and, and it was it was between, you know, the Bills had a pick, um, um, and the Colts were between their two picks. So it was like, I don't know if it was 233 was the Bills, 234 was the Colts, and 235, I'm just throwing out numbers, was the Bills again. Uh, I think Bill Polian was going to take me with that pick to the Colts. Um, and I didn't know if the Bills were going to kind of pull the trigger. So I actually kind of thought I was going to Indianapolis. And then all of a sudden, Wade Phillips, you know, the phone rings in my apartment. You remember those old caller ID boxes? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I had the house phone and the caller ID box and my buddies run over there and, and they look at it and they go, oh my God, it says the Buffalo Bills. And it was Wade Phillips. 648 yeah, 1800, so, right? 648 yeah, right, 1800. <laughs> yeah. That was the number they call. They call to cut me. So I didn't like <laughs> oh, it. It cuts both so ways. You get, you get the, that's the greatest number on draft day. And it's the worst number around like August. -ish. That's really, so, that, that's funny. <laughs> I, I felt both of those. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, I had, it, it was a, it was a, obviously a rush of emotion. Um, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of a lot of people along the way, a lot of coaches, friends, players, um, and a lot of support. And it was, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be a smooth ride, but I, I was just happy to have the opportunity to take that ride. Yeah. So did you did you have a preference in, in 2000? The, the quarterback of the Colts is Peyton Manning. So did yeah. you did yeah. you and, and you, you know, kind of grew up here. Did you have a preference where you went? Um, I, I actually, yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to play for the Bills. I, I, I thought it would be a ton of fun. I mean, I, I kind of claimed myself as like a hometown kid in Buffalo just because, I mean, I was a Cleveland guy. The Browns would, you know, they're my hometown team. But being in Buffalo for that amount of time and kind of just understanding the community, understanding the fan base, and just wanting to be such a part of that, I mean, my heart was there in Buffalo. And it, and it still is. I mean, I still get to games. I still get up there. Um, and, and again, the fan base is something that is, that is something that stuck with me forever. And actually a funny story. I actually was with Bill Polian last night and we talk about the, you know, just the amazing fan base that is in Buffalo. We talk about the friendships and just on the team, because, and this is no offense. Sometimes there's nothing else to do other than go out mm -hmm. to eat and get some drinks and stay out till bars till four in the morning. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing in the state of New York. So I was really good at eating and drinking for a while when I was there. And Mr. Polian and I were joking about, you know, the big tree in. And the friendships <laughs> that you made along the way with with guys. I mean, I go have wings with, you know, Alex Van Pelt and, you know, Trey Teague and Mark Camp, I mean, got Drew Bledsoe, the guys that I still talk to. That's you know great. what I mean? And it's and it's an unbelievable bond that is there in Buffalo. I'm not I'm not knocking Indianapolis. I still had friends there in San Diego, but there is just something special about about Buffalo. That's that's great. You know, uh, Naaman uh, is going to be popping on here in a minute. And we'd love for you to stay on, and you know, we're going to continue. Well, please, talking yeah, to I you. have more questions for. Him. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah. I guess what I want to ask you is: is in two thousand, you're coming from you know from UB, which uh, is is growing, like we talked about. When you stepped on the field at rookie minicamp, or you stepped on the field at training camp, did it take you a while yeah. to to think you belonged? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was humbling. I mean, Antoine Winfield, who arguably is one of the best. Uh, you know, players to ever come out of the state of Ohio. He was the guy that I had to, you know, go up against first in one-on-ones. And Ted Ted Cottrell told me, he's like, I know you're going to run nine routes all day, you know, with your go routes. And so Antoine Winfield got up about two inches from me in press coverage, which obviously I never faced a guy like Antoine Winfield in my career at Buffalo. And he jammed me and I probably didn't move an inch off the line and the play was already over. And I went back to the huddle and I'm like, yeah, you know, so that was a humbling experience in my first minicamp. I, I will never forget that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, 
And then all of a sudden that, that mental psyche kind of kicks in where, you know, the competitor inside of you, you know, you're learning the plays, you're feeling more comfortable. You're not thinking as much as the, as the offense kind of sets in and some of the concepts, because it's just a difference in nomenclature, right? Like everyone runs basically the same plays. It's just, they call it something different. And once I could wrap my head around that, I became more comfortable. Yeah. Just, just to stop you here. Uh, thanks, Naaman Roosevelt for joining us. Hey, uh, Naaman. We're uh, talking with Drew Haddad. We're doing a special episode on UB to the Bills. And obviously you two guys are, are so got well me known. With- yeah, we got you here, Naaman. Okay, got uh, you with the legend. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, dude? yeah. So, what's so, up, Naaman? What's up, buddy? We're, we're, obviously, you just heard Naaman. We were just talking to Drew about you know getting through his first you know uh, mini camp and, and training camp. Uh, so we're gonna get to your story in a minute. But uh, Don, go ahead with Drew here. Well, I was gonna tell Drew if it makes you feel any better. We had Don Beebe on, and he he shared the exact right. same experience he had at his first mini with camp with Nate Odoms. Nate Odoms, and he couldn't Nate get off God, the line, yeah. so he yeah. he ended up having to go to take like karate yeah, he, he lessons. Took, he or took he took taekwondo, oh, yeah. like an emergency yeah. taekwondo, like six sessions to try to hand to learn to hand fight to get away from yep. Nate Odoms. And then the next year, yep. he couldn't wait for mini camp, and he he fared much better. <laughs> Naaman, yeah, thanks for right joining up. us. We're excited to have you. No, I appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Drew, you know, we get we yep. get to the, the, the 2000 season. Uh, you know, is it difficult to be, you know, kind of on the edge of the roster? Is it one of those things where were you worried every week that it was going to be your last week here? Like, you know, some of the guys that we've had are are established, you know, players, Hall of Famers, Wall of Famers. You know, guys like you are are almost you know more interesting just because you guys are battling like to stay in the NFL and I don't think people realize yeah. even though you make the 53 it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to be on the 53 for the whole year. Yeah, you the thing is you have the mentality that you're always number 53. So if somebody gets hurt and if something happens that that phone rings on Tuesday at three o'clock or four o'clock and you get released by the time the waiver wire clears, you know that that's always the fear and I guess that's part of the the attitude that you have and uh, the hunger when you're going out there. I mean whether you're a you know, fifth, sixth, seventh round pick, or you're a free agent, um, you understand it's an uphill battle. And uh, I think that, you know, bringing that every day was something that you did, but you always had in the back of your head, the fact, like I said, like you just got to clear that Tuesday at like 4 p.m. time frame, And then you knew you were there for that extra week, or you got an extra game check, or you got an extra practice squad check. Like those were the things, you know, going from renting furniture instead of buying a house or, buy, you know, getting an apartment with a long-term lease, doing month-to-month leases. Like these are things that are normal, for guys like me, you know what I mean? And, and, but that's something that you learn and you kind of come accustomed to. And like I said, I think that kind of builds in the hunger and it also adds to the gratification when you actually do get success um, because the road's been a little bit bumpier. That's mental toughness right there. Naaman, uh, you were smi- and smiling and nodding along with that story. Uh, can you maybe tell us, we'll kind of skip ahead a little bit here. Can you kind of share your, you know, at the, at the kind of the, the bottom of the roster, you know, how your week to week went? I mean, it's the same, same as Drew's. I mean, every practice you was, you know, you like, I can't drop a ball. Like, you know, it was like, it was yeah. serious. You, I, I was, you know, spatting up for practice. I, I treated, you know, I had to treat every day like a game day. You know, it was, it was, it was that serious where it was like, okay, I got to come out here and, you know, every day was my, you know, bring my A game because you never know. It was, it was, it was definitely something crazy to see. I mean, my first mini rookie mini camp. I mean, I was walking out with a guy and. Uh, he get tapped on the shoulder like, "Hey, can you come see me?" I mean, every day was something like that where it was just like, "Okay, I got to come out here and, and and be on point." So it was, it was definitely uh, something different to see, but it was fun. So, so Drew, maybe you can. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna try something a little different here. Could can yeah. you introduce the audience to Naaman? You already mentioned. Him. Oh yeah, dude, I know. Well, I can. I can honestly say, Naaman. I mean, we've talked a couple times and stuff like that, but like. To have number one, number 18 on the field, number number one in your hearts, Naaman <laughs> Roosevelt from University of Buffalo, Buffalo zone, Naaman. Um, and uh, yeah, so my, my viewpoint on Naaman was always like when I was playing and, and Naaman, I told the story before, um, and I think you may have heard this down the line, but I, I always had a ton of respect for Turner Gill and what, what, what James and you were able to do, Drew Willie, like, I mean, the, the history and being able to kind of look back at what, where we were and then to see where the program was and then following the path when you guys got to University of Buffalo, uh, I watched you and your teammates with a, a tremendous amount of pride because, and, and I and I have my UB brothers that, that are with me and I'm, I still have a group text and your name would be flying around and these other guys' names because you had a culture at Buffalo that, you know, we weren't winning and we were making a transition. And then to see you guys go out there and be successful, you had no bigger fan base than, than your Buffalo alumni and your football alumni. And, um, it was just a lot of fun to watch you guys do your thing. 
No, appreciate it, man. You the legend, man. You know when I got there, that's all. That's all. Yeah, and everybody brought up your name, man. You drew, drew. That's you got to meet Drew. Drew was a man, like you know. <laughs> pleasure, bro. Yeah. Pleasure. I appreciate no, I appreciate it. Already know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that 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 was a better introduction than way we better. Drew. Yeah. Yeah. You. 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 <laughs> we, we, we caught. We caught a ringer here. Yeah. More importantly, Naaman, uh, you. You and I share the same high school. Uh, you are a St. Joe's Marauder, yeah. which. Uh, <laughs> which makes you, which automatically makes you a good dude. Uh, you know, maybe you can talk to us about, you know, choosing UB. Uh, when did you know that college football, you know, was going to be in the cards and then your journey to the Bills? Well, um, shoot, you, it's crazy because UB wasn't even recruiting me, you know, uh, in high school until Turner Gill got there. Turner Gill was like, uh, hey, he came to my house. He was like, hey, I want you to come play quarterback. And that was my thing. I wanted to play quarterback in college. Like, I, I just, you know, I didn't want, uh, that's all I played in high school was quarterback. So when he told me that, I was like, oh, I'm coming for sure. You know, he told me all the things I wanted to hear. You know, you can play quarterback. You're going to get number seven. You got this. You know, you <laughs> got the city on your back. You can, you know, you can, you can really change the program around it. You know, a kid from Buffalo, he, he come to my, uh, you know, he comes to my living room and tell me that. I'm like, okay, this is something I definitely want to do. So that's, you know, that's what got me there. And uh, the first year, it's funny because when, as soon as I got there, the first, the first day of training camp, he said, go to the receiver room. And I'm like, hold on, what? <laughs> <What's going> on? <laughs> so, you know, uh, um, it was cool because we had Drew Willie, which is like, okay, perfect. Drew Willie, you know, we had a quarterback that was already there. That was awesome. So I'm like, okay, I'm not even, you know, I get the ball and, you know, I learned this whole new position, but I had some great coaches. I mean, coach Turner Gill brought some great coaches in that, you know, was, you know, willing to teach, willing to learn, you know, I stayed before practice, after practice, you know, was just, you know, really focused on, okay, I'm going to get better and better every day at this position. And it took, it took my first year, it was tough. You know, I was, I couldn't even line up right. It was, it was, you know, it was a struggle, but after, you know, just putting in the work, putting in the effort and, you know, years went by, I started getting better and better and, and just building that confidence. I feel like off season is where you build that confidence. And I think off season, my off season is where I started just focusing on receiver, focusing on getting better and better, getting stronger, you know, getting faster. Was where I, where I, I built that confidence and, uh, you know, felt like my junior year was like, okay, I could really play receiver now. Like, I feel like I'm good at this receiver thing. And, you know, it worked out, you know, it worked out. So I think, you know, I don't know what would happen if I kept, you know, stayed at quarterback, but receiver was definitely, you know, the choice for me. Nice. Tell us about the play name. And I'm sure you remember it. Well, you caught a Hail Mary from Drew Willie as time expired to be Temple. I mean, that was, that was probably one of the greatest moments, you know, in my career for sure. You know, uh, I see every time I see a Temple guy, that's all they talk about was that Hail Mary. You know? <laughs> it. It, it was crazy because, you know, that, those games are always tough against Temple. We battled all the time. I, I, you know, I always say that that was probably some of the best games, some of the most physical games ever. And, um, you know, going down into the end, that last play, Drew really looked and told uh, told all of us, like, hey, just get down there. I'm going I'm to find a way to get the ball to the end zone. Just get there. Hurry up and get there fast as you can. And I felt it was like it was in slow motion. The ball was just coming right towards me. And all I want to do is, like, get up and just grab it and, don't, you know, don't let it go. So, yeah, you know, that's probably one of the special plays in my, in my life for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's I'm sure it's in slow motion. Just one of those that they just really so so Drew, like while Naaman was playing and you you, know, you talked about mm -hmm. the alumni and, and following along, like did you feel like you know Naaman had a chance at the NFL? I did. I mean, I, I obviously saw skills in him that that <laughs> I wish we had when I was there playing too. Probably took a little pressure off of me to be honest, but um that's no <laughs> knock on my guys. But Naaman was a different level. Naaman was a different level. James obviously drew. I mean, having guys that, that, again, D1 talent, like real D1 talent guys and um, and seeing his ability and then obviously having them have, you know, being able to go to MAC championship games, being able to go to bowl games, um, having some extra some extra eyes on them. You know what I mean? I think that was really beneficial for those guys as well. So, so Naaman, talk to me about, you know, college is coming to an end, uh, your NFL designs, and, and how did you, I mean, as a, as a Buffalo boy, as I am, I, coming to the Bills, like that's got to be like there's nothing better, right? Like how how did you did you choose the Bills as a UDFA? Like did the Bills choose you? Were you pitched by a number of teams? Like what was the selection process like? And real quick, I re I remember naming you being there because we would pay for <laughs> the travel for for the rookies coming in drafted and drafted. We paid for that. I remember when you got there, I'm like. Uh, you said, I, I don't think I need a reimbursement. It would have been pretty minimal, but yeah. <laughs> you had an easy trip. <laughs> Ten miles down the road. I remember you coming in, and I was rooting for you, and it was great to see how things played out. But, yeah, please tell us about that. 
No, for sure. I mean, so during the draft, you know, you get those calls like, hey, we might, you know, choose you in this round, this round. And then uh, once it got to the end, it was uh, three or four teams that hit me up. It was Chicago, it was Buffalo, it was, I think, the Rams and maybe the Jets. Those teams all hit, you know, hit me up with prices and, you know, what they would offer and stuff like that. So me and my agent really just looked at the roster and was like, you know, what's the best fit? And uh, we looked at Chicago, looked at Buffalo. And Buffalo, I think, you know, they, Stevie Johnson wasn't even, you know, Stevie Johnson yet. You know, it was it was Lee Evans and uh, kind of just a bunch of younger guys. So it was like, man, this is a perfect spot to go in and, you know, try to compete for a spot. So uh, that was the main reason why I was like, OK, Buffalo is a perfect spot. I, you know, I'd be at home, which is comfortable, but also the roster. We looked at the roster and like this is a perfect spot to, you know, get that opportunity. So I think that was the best fit for sure. Um, and it was a great experience, man. I, I loved it, man. I, I love being at home. I, uh you know, got to get some home cooking for sure. So it was definitely special. Yeah. No, you're right with Stevie Johnson. He was a seventh round pick, but I mean, uh, not but. He just, he he blossomed and, uh, man, what a character. He actually, Josh has been talking to him. We're going to get him on here. Yeah. So, so Naaman, I think people would be curious, being from here, where'd you live when you played for the Bills? So I live. I still I lived in Orchard Park my first year. Uh, me and Donald Jones got an apartment. We stayed, we stayed together for our first uh, two years. So I was I was always being cheap. I'm like, yeah, because like, like you said, you never you never knew what was gonna happen. So we, you know, yeah, no. we, were staying, we was you know being cheap, man. We were staying cheap. We was like, okay, we're just gonna get this. You know, we're gonna room together. We're gonna get these apartments, and we're just gonna stay in here. And uh, you know, that was that was probably the best thing. You know, having especially having somebody uh, like Donald. That was my boy, man. We we still talk. We talk every almost every day. It was just something that was just special a connection we made. It, it was that I think it was me, Donald Jones. Easily and uh David Nelson, all four of us came in together. So that was just like a click. We kind of just built a bond of like, okay, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna work together, we're gonna, you know, get better, we're gonna work hard and we're gonna do it. And it's it kept they kept us all, you know, all of us around, which is you know special. You don't usually do that where you keep, you know, uh all four of the you know, young rookie guys around. You know, they kept two of us on practice squad and they kept, you know, two on the roster, which was, you know, something special. Yeah, it's such an interesting thing because you're all aware of the cruel numbers game of, you know, yeah. 90 to 53, and you're all really essentially competing with each other, but you're all pushing to make each other better. So when you do get along like that with, with the guys that you're competing against, but hopefully going to play with, which you ended up doing, uh, that's pretty special. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, yeah, you know, you you already know you, you battle for a spot, but also it's like, okay. We building relationships. We all, you know, in this together. We all trying to figure out, you know, this thing together. And I think that also brought us together where it's like, okay, let's both, let's all work together. Hey, you, hey, you working out? Let's go work out. Let's go do this. Let's go do this. Where we all just kind of pushed each other and it made each, it made each other better for sure. Yeah. You know, those guys, the names you just mentioned, Donald Jones, I heard just got a job at the league office. Mm. Yep. And uh, uh, David Nelson, I remember when he came in, no one knew how good he could be because he played with Tim Tebow who ran all the time, yeah. you know, so you mm -hmm. didn't really have a, a body of work on him. Drew, who are the receivers that uh, were here when you came in on the roster? Yeah, it's, so my, my rookie year on the roster was uh, Eric Moulds, Fearless Price, wow. um, Jeremy <laughs> McDaniels, J-Rock yeah. was on there, J-Rock, um, you know, myself, and then I'm trying to think of the rest of the rookie. I mean, there was a, guys in camp like Kevin Drake and some other guys. I remember um, we, we we brought in uh, Kwame, Kwame Cavill. Kwame and, Cavill uh, was Avion Black. Yeah. Avion Black was Avion, like a, was was like a, yeah. drafted as kind of a returner slash Tennessee State. Yep. Yeah, Tennessee State. Yep, yep. And Avion and I still talk to each other. Travaris Tillman is your draft class. You know, kind of like what Naaman's saying, man. You start clicking with guys, and um, and yeah, I was going to mention Avion just because I mean, dude, he was he was a fourth round draft pick out of Tennessee State. I mean, he could burn and ended up having a a good career and playing over in Houston as well. Um, but yeah, very competitive room, very high level talent. I mean, Peerless is another Ohio guy. Um, so, you know, I always joke about Ohio football and stuff. So, um, but it's, it's, yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a competitive room. Um, Charlie Joyner was, was our receiver. Wow. Coach. wow. So Hall of Famer. Oh, oh we dro drew dropped off for a second here. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll wait till he comes back on. Come back. So, uh, so Naaman, maybe talk to us about. Uh, you know, once you're you're here, I always like to ask guys, how long did it take you to figure out that you belonged in an NFL mini camp, training camp, or you know, on a roster? Like, what was your first day, <laughs> first rookie mini camp like? Um, the rookie mini camp was it was fun. It was good. It was good. I thought it was pretty good. I thought you know, one on ones, I did a great job. I thought um, 
You know, I competed well. I thought I was good. What, what really changed it is when I got the training camp and I seen how fast it was. Like, you know, it was like it, it, it turned to another level how fast. Like, I think I was motioning and coach like, Mo, go, go. Like, you know, like I got I'm like, I thought it was just a motion. No, run across the field, get to the other side. It was it was it was stuff like that where it was like, OK, this is this is another level. Like, you know, the, you know, the, the, the you know, you got D, D line running, you know, four, six, four, you know, four five guys. You got. The speed was just that's the first thing which is the speed was just unreal you know it was just everybody was moving so fast so i think that was one thing you had to get used to was the speed of the game which is you know top notch was just and i'm like okay this is this is you know this is crazy even i heard drew talking about you know you know press man getting off press man i mean that was probably one of the toughest things we had to learn was getting off press because you got guys that's you know that's been in the league forever that that knows everything that's seen everything that you know that know every route that you're about to run and doing stuff like that it was like okay i gotta you know, focus on, you know, not showing what I'm about to do, not doing this, not doing that. So it took like a year to really understand the game, really run routes. And, you know, I thought I could run routes, but I was like, I don't know how to run routes at all. I need to focus on running, running <laughs> routes. So I think a year to like really, really focus on, okay, I need to run routes. I need to not turn this foot, not turn my head fat, you know, not turn my head to give any, any, the DB, anything to know what I'm doing, you know, in that route. So I think it was just, it was, took me a year to really like, okay, I could, I could, figure out you know this next off season figure out okay run this route this way do it this way do it this way learn how to use my hands and stevie johnson was probably the biggest you know one of the biggest things that helped me was he, like just watching him in practice was some of the craziest thing i you know some of the craziest stuff i've ever seen i never saw somebody run routes like that and it was like <laughs> hey if if i can you know do half the stuff he can do i could be all right so just yeah. watch <laughs> something special to see well, in that in that year, going back a couple things, uh, something Drew said before about the guys you're going against too. Like he was talking before he came on about going against a you know an all pro like like Anton Winfield, and just that that takes things up another level too. But in 2011, naming your your year, it was so cool. We had such a promising start that year before injuries really hit. But we had undrafted guys. I remember week two, David Nelson scored the game winning touchdown. Week three, which is maybe the biggest game in it comes up all the time, finally beat the Patriots and with the comeback. I, Donald Jones had a touchdown. And then in the Giants game a few weeks later, uh, you had a really long touchdown. It was like, man, all these guys, are, you made our, our scouting staff look really good. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, it was like, yeah, it was something crazy where it was just, you know, they brought all of us in and, and, and we just, man, we were just so motivated to, you know, to get on the field, to, to play, to, you know, to play with each other for sure. I mean, even with that Giants, you know, touchdown, I mean, uh, David Nelson was in the backfield block and it made a great block on a, on a blitz, which, you know, which is, you know, something that helped out the whole play. So stuff like that where we were just out there playing for each other, out there having fun. It was uh, Stevie Johnson was in the zone. Like, I never saw somebody. I always, like, it's funny because everybody that played with us with that time always, like, even to this day, like, who was the best receiver you ever seen in person? It was, like, Stevie Johnson. Like, yeah, so that's the first thing I say. Stevie Johnson, everybody was, like, I'm telling you, you never saw nothing that, like that. So we all was like, whatever Stevie do, we gonna do. So it, that <laughs> kind of him had, having him around was also like made it even special, you know, even better. It was like, okay, he's what he does is we can, you know, put that into our game and make us even better. So it, just having him around and you know us just you know wanting to just watch and learn and you know uh, do stuff like that made us even better. That's a perfect segue, Drew. I was going to ask you, uh, Eric Moulds is going to be introduced in, or inducted into the Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Oh, they just announced yeah. that. Uh, how he's not on the Wall of Fame is kind of beyond me. Yeah. Uh, he was a yeah. freak, like watching him in practice. Now, with a guy like that, you know, like Naaman just said, hey, I'm going to do what Stevie Johnson does. Well, not many human beings can do what Eric Moulds does. Like, no. did you get stuff from him? Or was it, hey, I'm going to do, you know, 80% of yeah. what he can do? Like, the dude was just, yep. he was yep. a freak. Yeah, no, he, he was a freak. And unbelievable talent. And getting back to your thing, number one, I mean, congrats to him for getting into the, you know, Buffalo Athletic Hall of Fame. I think that's awesome. Um, and also, like, him being on the wall, I think, I mean, it has to happen, right? I mean, the fact that it hasn't happened yet, but it absolutely has to happen. I mean, he had a, he had a mindset in practice and dude, he was big and strong and fast and physical. I mean, before that was kind of even a thing, like he was, he was that guy. So he was there the first time when I got drafted. And then when I came back in 2004 and 2005, obviously he still was there. And the thing that I saw, the biggest transition I saw, you know, in 2000, he was a little bit younger, but I mean, just a phenomenal player. But in 04 and 05, he took that that veteran role, that mentorship role, that 
that leadership, right, with Josh Reed, Lee Evans, um, you know, other young guys. And he, but he respected the game and he played it the right way. Um, but he was just, like I said, he was a freak. I mean, he was strong and, and, and can do everything. And so, like, I'd always give the analogy to Moles, like, yeah, yeah, man, E, what's up, you know, whatever. And then he'd be like, okay, he's like, you got to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, hey, man, my, my elevator only goes up to about the eighth <laughs> floor. Yours is, like, going up to, like, the penthouse. Like, so I'm going to do what I can to try and not hurt myself doing what you're doing. Like, that was always my joke with him. My hips were a little bit tighter than Eric, so. So <clears throat> we're, we're uh, we, we value your both of your time so much. Uh, we're going to do a two-minute warning here in, in a bit. Uh, but before that, two things. Uh, we want to know what you're both doing today. A name, and I know you're, you're coaching. You hear a little bit about that. Uh, but before that, uh, how, how can we not bring up the name Khalil Mack? When, when did you first become aware of him, and was he just everything and more that you thought a guy like that would be at UB? I mean, when the first day he walked in, <laughs> we was like, who, who is this guy? Like, Turner Gill mm -hmm. did – Great, man. Turner Gill was probably one of the best recruiters, you know, I've been around. I mean, he brought so much talent in. Uh, to get a kid like Khalil Mack, I mean, it was, it was something special. You seen from the, the first day he came in, I mean, he was strong, athletic, fast. And I always tell people he was better at basketball. When we play intramural basketball, I know Drew noticed in the triple gyms. Yep. I mean, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. It was, yeah. It, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yep. You know, we threw him alley, we throw him alleys, he, he blocking shots, he... He, he running down, the, you know, he, they did everything. So we seen that from the jump was like, okay, he's going to be special. And I mean, he wanted to work. That's what Turner Gill, I mean, I brought, he brought guys that, you know, just love football. He always talked about it. He just want people that just love football. That just want to be around. That just want to stay in, stay in the building, you know, just be around. Like after practice, we used to hang in the locker room for, you know, for hours, just, you know, talking football, just being around each other, you know, you know, loving each other. I think that was one thing too. It was just guys that just wanted to be around football, that just love football and, uh, we saw that from the beginning where Mac was going to be special. Yeah. And Drew, uh, what uh, what what are you up to these days? Uh, you you were telling us before about obviously you got four kids and they're all real busy, so that's a full time job in and of itself. But uh, are you still yeah. in 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 the coaching game? And so yeah, I help out with a grade school here, and I do some stuff at Saint Ignatius High School um, where where my boys go. I'm not you know I'm involved as much as I can be. Um, so yeah, but in, in, you know, my, the daytime, I'm, uh, I still, I've been in sales with, uh, orthopedic implants for a long time. So knees and hips and shoulders, so all my former teammates who need them, like I usually, <laughs> I usually get a bunch of calls like, Hey Drew, I know you've been doing this for a long time. You know, who's the best knee guy in Buffalo or who's the best hip guy in Cleveland or who's, you know, so it's fun, man. It's, it's been keeping me busy. And, and I think to be honest, like, um, you know, kind of coming full circle, you know, name, and I don't even know if you knew it, but like. You know, a couple of weeks ago, my 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 second son, my sophomore, got offered a scholarship to go to UB, which was kind of cool. Like, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, when you when you think about it, it's like he's got a couple offers right now. But you know, I'm I'm obviously kind of pushing him in that that <laughs> in that direction. But um, I'd love to, you know, I'd love to see obviously the program what Maurice, you know, what he's doing, Coach Mo's doing over there. I'm um, like I said before, from the guys that came before us to the guys that are there now to the guys that will be after us, you know the Namens of the world, you know, all these other guys, like it's, it's a pretty cool fraternity because I think our story at UB, not to segue too much is it's unique. I mean, going from D3 to one double A to division one to, you know, you got a bunch of different dudes that have been there and played a bunch of different backgrounds, bunch of different talent levels, but the same mindset of just, you know, where you be, where you be, you know, that's who we are. And that's what we're proud of. Fantastic. And then Naaman, um, Drew, by the way, um, Drew, you got a career in media, if you ever wanted, I think, based on your intro oh, before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and name, name I got Naaman. Name and I'll, name and I'll get our own show. You guys, there you go. There you go. So Naaman, talk to me. Let's go. There you, talk to me about your sweatshirt. Is it is that the Saskatchewan Rough Rider? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. So I just got into town a couple of days ago. I'm um, just the office assistant right now up in Saskatchewan. So we start rookie minicamp next week. So uh, we just, you know, begin a playbook and everything ready and, you know, just getting adjusted to, you know, this season. So, you know, I'm excited. You know, this is my first, uh, you know, professional coaching job. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been exciting. It's been, a, you know, it's been a lot of work, man. It's, I didn't, you know, when you first, it's like, okay, you know, coaches put a lot of work in, but yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we put in 14, yeah. 15 hour, you know, our days. It's been. It's Do been you know every CFL rule yet? You, you said everything. <laughs> it's three down. I know, man. It's a lot of different rules, man. 
<laughs> yeah, you might want to get that three down versus four down. Yeah. It could be. It could come into situational play. <laughs> that's really. That's funny. That's that's great. So before we let you guys go, we do something called the two minute warning, where we ask uh, ten rapid fire questions, and hopefully two minutes or less. But with two of you guys, we'll try to keep it under four minutes. Uh, so Don, you can uh, fire away with the first one. We'll just we'll we'll alternate. We'll go name in first, and then Drew second on all the answers. Okay, I was going to say seniority first, but if that's the you, you okay. <laughs> let the young buck go. Young guy, young there guy. you go. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there you go. Get us started. Okay, uh, name in your most interesting place to watch a Bills game. Ooh. Um, probably my dad's house. He bring all his boys over there. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> How about you, Drew? The Cleveland Bills backers bar. I go there for as many Bills games as I can. So. Cool. Now, are you uh, – Browns versus Bills, who are we cheering for? Um. I honestly am cheering for the Bills <laughs> because the All Browns right. have been so bad. The Browns have been so bad. It's <laughs> Good man. Name and uh, three three people dead or alive you'd want to have dinner with. Ooh. Uh, Snoop Dogg. Um, I love Tim and Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Nas and... <laughs> 50 Cent. I'm a big rapper, so I'm a big I can, I can tell. There you go. <laughs> Drew? Yeah. Um, so uh, I would go Michael Jordan. I'd go Sebastian Maniscalco, and I would go my grandfather. There you there go. There you go. All right, Naaman, you're entering an arena. You're a big deal. Dry ice. What's your entrance song? Ooh. <laughs> you know I make music, so I'm going with my own music. There yeah. you go. Okay. Oh, He's the first it. one who's at his own it. song. I like it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good stuff. Drew? Um, oh, that's a tough one, man. I don't know. I mean, it, it would probably be um, probably Eminem, Lose Yourself. That's a good one. You know what? I realized that Drew has an advantage here because he gets to think about the answer. So I'll switch that's it up great. here. And I appreciate that. No, no, no. no. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Naaman, best, con best concert you've ever been to, Naaman? Best concert. I was just talking about this, too, at Darien Lake. It was uh, – I don't know if y'all know. Y'all know who Waka Flocka is. is I, rapper, but like I claim ignorance there. Drew, do you know who he is? <laughs> in I've heard. Uh, yes, I have. Yep, yep. In 2010, yep. he was big, and I went to a, I went to a concert at, at uh, Darien Lake, and it was the best concert I've ever been to. <laughs> all right, uh, Drew. It's probably not the same answer, right? <laughs> not the same. No, it's all right. I'm going to say it was in Buffalo. It was at, you know, HSBC or whatever they call it now, but I, I saw Phil Collins at HSBC, and that was that I was, was there. Cool. The wow. in round yeah, concert? That, yeah, yeah, he, he did his, his drum stage, solo. Like, yeah. yeah. His Who's going to play it? It was an empty drum set. Yeah, yeah, he yeah he's talk, Don's, yeah. Don's talked about that one before. You're not, yeah, that's that's great. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. It was. Yeah. All right. Uh, name in your favorite Buffalo restaurant and your favorite dish you get there. Ooh. <laughs> I'm at my pop's restaurant now. So my pop's just made a restaurant called The Rose. It's downtown. Okay, I've heard, I, yeah, yeah, yep, one, right near the casino down there. Yep, yep, one ninety nine Scott Street. Everybody check it out. But probably the wings from there, are some of the best wings I, you know, I had. So go to yeah, nice. check. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to do a restaurant review of the Rose, Don. I'll, I'll, we'll go there and check it out. I think we just got one. There you go. But I'll still go there. I yep, it. I love it. Uh, True. So, so my my mine's easy. So I'm gonna give a shout out to Michael and Scott Militello, uh, the Militello family at the Bijou downtown. I'd always go there and get a Greek chicken salad and. Um, it was unbelievable, and I told them they had to name it after me, but I don't think I was good enough, so I nah, never did that. Keep on it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Naaman, what's your uh, what was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Ooh, cartoon, that's tough. Um, I say not as a kid, but just in general, probably a uh, Family Guy. I mean, I still watch okay. you know every time Family there you Guy. Go. That's wow. awesome. That works, Drew. Uh, uh tom and jerry there you go okay yep. uh the most annoying fan base in the nfl oh the patriots the patriot fans <laughs> i can't stand you, you gonna say cleveland drew i dare you <laughs> no i know it's pittsburgh i don't even get even when oh. I was Buffalo, if i was in indy pittsburgh people are t i mean no 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 room for them <laughs> Zero. <laughs> that's uh, that's great. We got uh, we got two more here. Uh, can you drive a stick shift, Naaman? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> Drew, 
Yes. Yep. My wife taught me. My, I'm, I'm proud to say my wife taught me. My girlfriend at UB, she goes, if you have to drive me around, you better learn how to drive sticks. So I did. So, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Great. Nice. So, Don, you can finish us up here. It's a perfect one. Uh, do we play it just the way it is? Yeah, just the way it is. All right. Can you guys sing five? This is together now. Yes. Five seconds of the UB fight song. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Naaman. Go ahead, three. three. Oh, you two, got me one. there. <laughs> we'll take anything we can get. No, we got we got nothing from the artist, huh? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Go you be go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a fight song. I didn't... <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's great, no guys. We guys, didn't that, many, that's... we didn't score. We didn't score many touchdowns when I was there. Uh, so maybe I just didn't hear it that often. That's so. funny. No fault of you two. That's you guys, great. Uh, amazing yeah. careers and and what a great time we just had. Thank you. Yeah, so much. thanks both of you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. No, appreciate you guys. Appreciate man. it. Sure. All right, guys. Thank take, you. Have a good day. Thanks take fine. care. All right, you too. Thanks.